I haven't had a chance to see that yet, so I'm not sure which one you're referring to specifically. I, I will say that in general, uh, battling the uh, opioid and heroin epidemics uh, are one of our top priorities. Uh, and, and I believe the house is uh, uh, one of the house's key priorities as well. What kind of support do you have over here for this energy bill that looks like it's heading your way? Uh, we'll see. Um, we had five uh, no votes in the last General Assembly on uh, House Bill 554. Uh, as we've talked about before, I think this bill actually goes further than that one does, and uh, all five of the no votes are back. Uh, and we've had uh, five or six new members, uh, and I'm not sure how, how those affect uh, that vote total. How many, do you, how many do you need to override over here? I believe it would be 20 or 21. I thought you were handing me that. <laughs> President, why, um, why did you put the prevailing wage bill in Senate Bill 72 into finance committee? Uh, I, I think there were a number of different uh, committees that it could have gone to. Um, we have overlapping jurisdiction with quite a few. Uh, that one in particular um, has impacts on, uh, or at least the, uh, the proponents of the bill have argued that it has impacts on local governments and how they spend their money. Uh, so that seems like a reasonable place for that. Um, conceivably, it could have gone to transportation, commerce, and labor. It could have gone to local government. It could have gone to government oversight. There are a number of different places for, for each bill that's introduced, and I thought that was a reasonable place to put a bill about how you spend your money and how local governments allocate resources. Do you think that will that committee have time to take that bill up with the budget on the way? Um, I, I think that the members of the committee, and certainly the chairman, are pretty hardworking, and uh, they're free to have hearings on anything they want. And uh, I would imagine the budget will take up the bulk of our time over the next few months, but uh, um, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. It seemed as though there was a lot of support in the Senate for local uh, transportation and, and public transit projects. Are you, is the Senate going to be looking for another opportunity to increase funding for those? Um, we'll, we'll see how that materializes during the main operating budget process, but uh, uh, the Senate did support uh, increasing funds going specifically to local governments. I think we're sensitive to the needs of our, our local governments, but uh, um, you know, there's always a give and take when you get into the conference uh, process. And uh, um, while I know a number of members of the Senate felt pretty strongly about that, um, we are also uh, uh, continuing discussions with the Department of Transportation and with the administration about how uh, the department will allocate uh, the resources that it has, and our understanding is that they they intend to um, work with local governments and, and give them approximately $300 million uh, over the course of the biennium. Uh, as far as changing the formula again, uh, we'll, we'll see if anyone here proposes that, but uh, certainly if, if we found other ways to help local governments uh, as we work through the operating budget process, we'll consider those. Outside of the fees that were, that were passed in that budget, has there been any discussion about increasing overall state revenue for transportation? Sure. Because um, a lot of what you're talking about is just diverting money that's already coming in to different places. Well, and, and there aren't, uh, as far as I'm aware, any direct fee increases in that bill. There are a number of places where the cap was raised uh, for other entities that are able to look at those things, whether it's the Public Utilities Commission or the Registrar. Um, but uh, in terms of what um, the legislators have actually directed or not directed. I think this bill was a net fee decrease uh, overall. There are a couple of fees in the bill that uh, that are cut um, by this legislation. So, um, are we considering other ways to raise revenue? Look, once the main operating budget gets here, everything will be on the table. But uh, I don't think there are very many people in my caucus who would support raising taxes. If that's what you're asking. So, even though the gas tax hasn't been improved or um, hasn't been increased since 2005 and the average fuel efficiency of cars has gone up by three to four miles per gallon in that time you're not interested in um in the short term uh, are we planning to increase taxes during this budget process no uh, 
are we going to consider um, whether there are alternative approaches to the current gas tax uh, for raising revenue? Um, yes, and that's something that I've actually spoken to uh, Senator Eklund, the chair of our Ways and Means Committee, about uh, over the last week. He does plan on uh, uh, teeing up some hearings, even though we don't have legislation, to consider the issue. Uh, we had a number of amendments asking for the creation of a study committee or a task force uh, that had been proposed for the transportation budget. Um, people, a few people wanted a task force to look into alternative sources as um, efficiency improves or as more people um, use uh, CNG uh, or hybrid cars, uh, how does that affect our, our revenue stream? We don't need a task force for that. That's what the Ways and Means Committee is for. So I've, I've asked John to go ahead and start having hearings on that. What about Senator Coley's bill basically swapping a uh, increased registra car registration for a tax credit on um, I anticipate that that will also be considered either by the Transportation Committee or the Ways and Means Committee uh, at some point uh, in the near future. And um, as far as how members might come out on that one way or another, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, I, I think it does raise some, some challenging questions. One more, guys. Do you think anybody is legitimately going to put up a $5 plate fee up for a referendum vote? Who would actually have time and the inclination? You know, like, the, the, the it's permissive to the counties, but it's still subject to a referendum. Do you really think that anybody's going to bother with that? Uh, you know, we'll they just pay their 5 bucks and move on? Well, we'll see whether, whether people want to do that or not. As you'll recall, the Senate version of the bill uh, required an upfront uh, vote uh, before you could do the fee increase. Um, I would have preferred just not to have the fee increase in there at all. But uh, there is a diversity of opinions on that issue, um, both within the Senate and uh, between the House and the Senate and the uh, governor's office and local governments. And I think where we ended up was a pretty reasonable compromise. Thanks, guys.